Hi, this is Lior from Atera, and I'm going to show you how to set up our ticketing system. So with Atera, there are multiple ways of opening up a ticket. The first could just be to click on you and ticket from here and fill in all the relevant information. Another way is through the alerts. So if you navigate to the alerts page from here, you'll see the option of clicking on create ticket and either creating a new one entirely or assigning it to an existing one. The third way is automating it through the alert settings. So if you navigate to admin, under monitoring and automation, you'll find the alert settings where you can toggle on the option of automatically opening tickets directly from an alert. The fourth way of opening up a ticket is through the email forwarding rule. If you navigate to admin, under support and ticketing, you'll find the email settings. You'll have to fill in your primary support address and then you're gonna to have to create a forwarding rule in your inbox so that every email you receive to this address will be forwarded to a Terra's support address. That way, every single time you receive an email to your primary support address, a ticket is created within a Terra. The fifth way of opening of a ticket is through the customer portal. Under customer service, you'll find the customer portal. The customer portal allows end users to create tickets and access knowledge base articles. This is what the customer portal looks like for your end users. All they have to do is click on new ticket, fill in all the relevant information and click on save. Unlike an email, from here you can make sure they're filling out any relevant fields. That way you can have all of the relevant information to solve their issues. They'll also have access to a knowledge base where you can upload different articles for them to access. Note that you can also set up a custom domain for the portal. The last way of creating a ticket is through the API. So under data management, you'll find the relevant documentation and API key. Let's take a look at the tickets page. From here, you can get an overview of all the different tickets you have created. You can find the SLA, assigned technician, priority, and much more information. You can also use the filters to create different views. For example, from this dropdown, I can see my tier one tickets, high priority, and more. You can also run bulk actions from this page. You can select all your tickets over here, assign them to a technician, set the status, and even merge multiple tickets together. To create a new ticket, you can also click on new ticket over here. Let's create one together. Select the customer, the contact, the ticket title, and add a description. From here, you'll be able to choose bold, bullet points, an ordered list, attach a file, and on the right-hand side, you'll have to fill in all the relevant information. From here, you can already assign it to a technician group, to a specific technician. You can make sure you have the correct contract associated to the ticket, and once you fill in all of the required fields, you'll be able to click on Create. Let's click into an existing ticket to see what it looks like. From here, you can leave an internal note or respond as a public reply. Over here, you'll also be able to select quick reply templates. So for example, if you have an email that you have to keep writing over and over again, you can save it as a template and automatically fill it in. At the bottom, you can find the conversation section where you can get a history of the interactions. On the right-hand side, you can add in manual time entries or have the time tracking turned automatically on through the ticket settings. Over here is the contact information. And if you have an agent assigned to the contact, you'll be able to remote into the device directly from the ticket itself. On the bottom are some more ticket properties and required fields. And at the bottom, you can also integrate to your calendar. Let's head over to the admin section where we can configure the ticket settings. Under support and ticketing, you can find the ticket settings. You can decide whether the ticket timer automatically starts or is off. You can also choose whether the technician default response type is public or internal and you can select which tickets can be viewed on the customer portal for your end users. Let's head over to the ticket automation rules. From here, you can automate different actions 
based on statuses or different ticket activity. Let's add a new rule so that every time a ticket has been created, an automated email will be sent out to our contacts. So the rule name will be new ticket creation. The trigger will be new ticket created. You'll see from the dropdown that you can have different triggers such as a ticket status changed, ticket closed, and so on. Once you click on add, you'll have to select the conditions. So for example, we want the source to equal an email or the source to equal the portal. And the action should be send an email to contact. And from the drop down, you'll find all of the different email templates you've created. Once you click on add, every single time a new ticket is going to be created from either the email or through the customer portal, an automated email will be sent out to the contacts, letting them know we got it and we're working on it. Make sure to go over all the different settings under support and ticketing. For example, ticket forms. You can create different ticket form templates that determine the custom fields included in each ticket. For example, you can create a template for a hardware request and add any necessary fields that have to be filled out. Thank, Thank you for, for watching, watching this ticketing, ticketing video and, and good, good luck. luck.